Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Hillary Clinton's epic cross-country blame tour continues tonight. In a series of interviews promoting her book, What Happened, Clinton insists that what happened is everyone else screwed up or was out to get her. She said as much this morning on the Today Show. Watch. When it comes to the self-inflicted wounds, mm -hmm. when you look at the list of them, and you go through them in the book, mm -hmm. did you make enough mistakes yourself to lose the election without any of the other things you talk about? Well, I will say no, Matt. Uh, I don't think that will surprise you. So how did she lose? Well, in Hillary Clinton's telling, the list of guilty parties is long and not surprisingly does not include her. In an interview with Vox, she blamed the media, whose members, almost to a person, supported her in the race, but somehow sabotaged her campaign anyway. I don't think the press did their job in this election, with very few exceptions. Is it that it's just not as, uh, you know, enticing to the press because the other guy's running a reality TV show, which is, like, hard to turn away from? And whatever he says, we think is kind of goofy, but, hey, it's good TV. And on NBC, she blamed an unseen conspiracy by none other than the diabolical puppet master, Vladimir Putin. There was certainly, we know, a plan from Putin and the, level, and the highest levels of the Kremlin to influence our election. We now know that it was everything from Facebook ads and phony people acting like Americans who were Russians. We know so much more than we did even when I turned the manuscript in. Oh, but it continues. It wasn't just Putin. On The View, she blamed Bernie Sanders for daring to challenge her inherited right to the job. Watch. You talk about Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. and you say he um, shares responsibility. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I know what it's like to lose because I lost in 2008 mm -hmm. to uh, President Obama. As soon as I lost, I turned around, I endorsed him, yeah. I worked hard for him, and I didn't get that respect get from that him yeah. and his supporters. Yeah. They don't respect me. And if that wasn't enough, all of it, Hillary also, it goes without saying, blamed sexists. And that would include the majority of married women in America. They voted for Donald Trump, apparently because they hate women, too. I write in the book about an incredible conversation I had with Sheryl Sandberg. She says, look, the research is absolutely clear. The more professionally successful a man becomes, the more likable he is the more professionally successful a woman becomes, the less likable she is. When a woman walks into the arena and says, I'm going for this myself, it really does have a dramatic effect on how people perceive. That, according to noted social scientist Sheryl Sandberg. For the record, Hillary has not yet blamed the Illuminati or the Trilateral Commission for her loss, but the bookstore is still young and we'll follow it. In the meantime, Mark Stein is an author and columnist, and he joins us tonight. Mark, what do you make of all this? It's beginning to remind me of uh, O.J. hunting for the real killers. The, uh, <laughs> the, the, the wider she looks for the real killers of her campaign, the more you suspect, and in fact, the more your view is confirmed that the answer is closer to home, considerably closer to home. <laughs> That's a perfect analogy. So what is the effect of the Democratic Party? So, uh, I mean, not that I'm a reliable Democratic voter. It's really not my business, but I'm a watcher of this stuff. And I'm thinking, if you're the Democrats, you know, Trump's having some problems. You want to make the most you can of that. And into the calculation comes Hillary Clinton, this ghost from the past, to talk about herself. Is that helpful for you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's actually very revealing. I mean, if you look at Bernie, for example, Bernie uh, is plowing on now to try and introduce socialized health care in America uh, right. because to him, American health care isn't wrecked enough, so he'd like to take it to the uh, next level. So Bernie, in <laughs> fairness, whatever one believes about, uh, whatever one thinks about him, is plowing on uh, with uh, a, a policy concern. Hillary is writing a book that actually has nothing to say about policy, uh, has nothing to say about where the Democrats should go, and is instead mired in all, on all kinds of weird issues, like including, as you say, uh, among the people she blames are, quote, phony people acting like Americans, unquote. I don't even know what, I don't even know what that means. But it, it, it indicates a high degree of paranoia. If you're, if you're out there on the street and you're worried that all around you 
are phony people acting like Americans. I might even be one of them, Tucker. You can't tell anymore. That's how crazy it is. <laughs> and it's also, and I've suspected this for 25 years, actually, since I started covering the Clintons, it's not very clever. So she's got this line in her book, and I know that you're an Orwell scholar, so I wanted to run this by you. She talks, she compares the Trump campaign to the state in the novel 1984, and she says the aim of state propaganda is to, quote, make you question logic and reason and to sow mistrust toward exactly the people we need to rely on, our leaders, the <laughs> press, experts who seek to guide public policy based on evidence. Yeah. So she's saying basically the message of George Orwell is you right. need to trust the government, the experts, and the media. Is that, do you think, right. a fair reading of Orwell's message? No, of course not. And the idea, <laughs> by the way, I mean, it would be, I mean, to, to, to uh, revive the old line about history repeating itself, first tragedy, then fast. The idea of a remake of 1984 with Trump and his Billy Bush tape and his Rosie O'Donnell jokes and all the rest of it. The idea, the fact, the fact is, there is a grain of truth in what she says. The media loved her. The media looked at her adoringly. But the media, even in their bias, are sufficiently human that Trump was just too interesting. Uh, yes. And the fact is that every time Trump got up on stage, you never knew what he was going to say. He might go on about the Iranian nuclear program, or he might go on about how Macy's stock price had tanked since they'd stopped carrying Trump ties. You never knew what he was going to talk about. Uh, <laughs> Hillary was the most canned and robotic presidential candidate. And that's, that was the issue. The idea that, uh, that, that it wasn't self-inflicted wounds, yes, it was, because at heart she had no rationale for her candidacy, and she wasn't a good enough candidate oh, to Oh, but you're missing it. No, no. What, no, what she's saying is you're a deeply shallow man, Mark Stein. You're not smart mm. enough to dig mm. into the complex policies she proposed. Well, I actually read her campaign book, her infrastructure plan, among many mm. others, the single largest collection of banalities I've ever seen. There was no substance there. And yet she's no. trying to convince us that, like, we missed it because we're not as sophisticated as she is. No, and in fact, in, in fairness to, uh, to Donald Trump, he may be the reality show candidate, as she says, but he stood up on that first day when he went on about Mexico's not sending us our best people, they're sending us all these rapists and murderers. Right. And whatever you feel about it, he, he introduced the issue into the campaign, which was immigration and the wall. And so you can mock the, the, the joke candidate, but actually one of the things that Trump did that was incredibly useful is that he destroyed all the boring, tedious conventions of professional American politics that resulted in the year 2016 in one party offering the wife of the previous president and the other party offering the son and the brother of two previous That's presidents. That's exactly right. And yeah. actually, and I say this as the subject of the tyrannical crown you guys threw off, that ought to be unseemly in a republic of 300 million people. And she should have known that, and Jeb Bush should have known that. Your husband was president. That's an off. Clear off. Go to Martha's Vineyard. Go to the Bahamas. Get off. Get out of here. And the same for Jeb Bush, too. Your dad was president, and your brother was president. And they weren't so indispensable that we need a third one. Clear off, you creeps. That's, that's unseemly in a republic. And if I sound like a phony guy, trying to pass myself off as an American, so be it. You real Americans should try saying that. <laughs> I, just, I just want that in print so I can keep it in my wallet and consult it once a week. Mark Stein, thank you. That was great. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Tucker. Thank you.